Hey everyone, thanks for checking into our latest Sunday night TDR Small Cap Sunday podcast. I'm your host, Shad Dales. Lots going on this week. Tonight, we feature two commodity companies, a restaurant corporation and a company that's been paying a dividend for over 25 years. Lots to get into, so lots to look forward to. Who are the companies? Well, let's find out and welcome in TDR lead analyst Bill McNarland here on a Sunday evening. Hope you had a good weekend. How are things? Uh, things are great. Very uh, chill. Uh, was a nice uh, Zen weekend and uh, good to catch up on some rest. Always love that Zen. Um, so you do- dove into two commodities companies, interesting companies to say least. And uh, before we get into it, um, what grabbed your attention about some of these companies today? If you had, an- I, I just this, I guess we could call this our dividend show. Where just everything has a dividend. I wanted to find out dividends over six percent. So we found out that there's. Uh, over 300 uh, companies that are small or micro caps that have dividends over 6%. And we're going to talk about all the things we're looking at, about whether or not we think a, a company, whether the 6% is uh, uh, realistic above that it's paying, or if it's something to uh, run away from. When you look at 6%, um, that's an impressive number, is it not? Yeah, and some are much higher. So six was the minimum. I said, I want to look at uh, companies that have over six and some are going to on the show today will have as high as 10%. Um, so we just want to find out, uh, is this uh, something that uh, is sustainable? Because if dividends are not sustainable, if they get cut, uh, the company stocks will go down. Yeah, for um, sure. So we want to avoid that. But we want to see if it's something that's sustainable. It's something that's very intriguing to be paid uh, once a quarter um, some income. All right. So the all dividend show, maybe this is a trend that we need to focus on moving forward. But before we get into finding out who those companies are, let's, as usual, all views on the Small Cap Sunday podcast and the guests on this podcast are purely opinion. You should not treat any opinions expressed by us or guests as investment advice. And the views on this podcast are solely intended to be informational and are not investment advice. Okay, let's begin. We're actually going to begin with a restaurant corporation. It's called Arc Restaurants. Trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol ARKR at a New York City current share price is $11.78, market cap 42 million, shares outstanding 3.6 million and a daily trading volume of just over 67,000 at 67.8 thousand. So, as I usually do in each show, what has been the 52 week range for this stock? Yeah, just the low was just over $10 and the high was above 16, so it's okay. a little bit closer to its 52 uh, week low. It uh, came up on my screen because it had a stated dividend, a 6.4% yield, which we'll okay. talk about a little bit more in detail. Um, and also it was, we've looked at restaurants before. We never found something that, that was uh, interesting. Uh, usually the uh, the costs were too high. Um, so I said, well, let's take a look at this one. They had some unique locations. And I said, that looks like an interesting uh, file to look at. So let's look at that. Uh, what makes them unique? Because they've got establishments located across the U.S., yeah, I would say this is, so uh, with this, they're looking for location, location, location. So they have some high-end places in New York. They have high-end places in Las Vegas and Florida, mostly tourist-driven areas that yeah. they're in. Yeah, My, I suspect that if you go to one of their restaurants, likely 80 or 90% of the people there are going to be tourists. So that was something I learned. They get a fantastic location. They have tourists that will, will come to it. And, and they have different, uh, anywhere from, you know, very interesting hamburgers to high-end steakhouses. Um, so it, they had a range, but definitely focus on the best location of places. So business is consistent in these areas. Um, you've actually mentioned here in the past that you've often dismissed restaurants. Why is that? And what's different about this corporation? V- very tough business, uh, as we know, because even, you know, you look at the businesses like McDonald's. They're always advertising to get you to come back. Every two weeks you get coupons in the mail uh, and such. And they're putting on these promotions, tons of advertising to get you there. Even though you've been to McDonald's many times in your life, they're constantly spending SGNA to get you there. Um, And this based on locations, I knew it was going to be a little different. So I said, well, with a dividend, that's interesting. And then I also, I, I had some interesting tidbits about the, the roles of tipping and financials that uh, I'll share as well from uh, my research. sg and is a big one when it comes to this industry. I know in the past, you've actually done some stats that basically show how much money companies are spending to acquire one customer, but that's always interesting to know pertaining to this industry. But let's go to the charts and let's look at revenue over the past 12 months, along with growth percentage. What'd you find? 
So the revenue is 184 million. It, it slipped a little bit uh, over the year. It's down one and a half percent, but they had a very key location that was closed for renovations out of their control. There was a hotel that they were in that was doing renovations in the area their restaurant was located. But over the last three years, they've been growing at 20.2%. But their, their gross margin is very good for a restaurant at 23%. So that means on a $100 bill, they're getting 23% of that uh, spread or $23. But their SG&A was only 6.5%. Okay. And so I had to sit back and look at this a little bit. This is lower than McDonald's. Okay. Um, and this is because of the locations. So if you have a great location, yeah. <clears throat> you don't have to advertise to a tourist. If you're out on a nice area of Florida or a nice area in Las Vegas, and you want to go to a nice steakhouse that looks very appealing, um, they don't have to necessarily advertise to get you into the restaurant. So on spending a $100 bill at the restaurant, only six and a half dollars was going toward the acquisition of the individual. So location is extremely important here because I know with some of these establishments, square footage is obviously a lot of money. You better make sure that obviously business is consistent. But like you said, New York, Las Vegas and Southern Florida and Miami are key places. What are some of the restaurant names that they own? Yeah, so so the restaurants uh, that they had, they had uh, uh, Sequoia, they had uh, Robert, uh, they had, so they, they had these established names um, that when you say it, it seems established, but it wasn't something that you would recognize. Like it had right. a nice name to a steakhouse, but it was just yep. theirs. Yeah. So it's had, it looked credible, <clears throat> but it wasn't branded toward a name that was spent money on branding. That's something you would recognize, but it looked credible. So, so I thought it was brilliant uh, marketing. And obviously a cautious way to spend SGNA. But one observation I had from this was, was the, the tipping component. So okay. let's think about this for a moment. They had revenue of 184 million. That means that mm -hmm. they had restaurant sales, bills that went through their restaurant. And if consumers gave a 15% tip on that, that would have been $28 million of tips. That's crazy. The market cap's 42. So think about that. If the that, service staff put the one year tips into the pool, they could buy out nearly the company or be the majority owner. $28 million in tips in one year. Assuming 15% tipping, which I, I think that's a, a okay assumption. Some are going to be higher. Some are going to be less, but they, the, the, the service staff could buy out, the restaurant almost. That's crazy. Can you believe that so, we're in a day and age now where you got to tip 20%? Even some restaurants so, post to 22 and 24%. And I'm just like, this is crazy. But So if it was 20%, there would be enough capital for the service staff to buy the restaurant after a year. Wow. Well, if you're a server from one of these corporations, you may want to get together and uh, collect some thoughts and decisions and not just focus on today, but focus on tomorrow. That is wild. How did you guys form this company? Well, we put together all of our tip money from business and basically bought it out. That's crazy. All right, now let's look at balance sheets, current cash position and working capital. What are we seeing? So, so uh, they have $11 million of cash compared to their $42 right. million uh, market cap. But here's something that's a bit of a yellow flag. Uh, they have negative 8 million of working capital. So they have quite a bit of account uh, uh, payables. Um, total debt to assets of seventy percent, not unexpected, um, and the breakup value of the the company was reasonable, thirty seven million. It was a lot of value here, but there's a bit of a red flag here that if you're on a board and you're deciding where dividend money is going, yeah, some board members might say, hey, let's bring up our working capital before we're paying excesses to shareholders. We could see that happening. Um, so that that's a little bit of a yellow flag. So philosophically, with dividends. I love dividend paying companies. I really don't like dividend paying companies that cut their dividends because the stocks always fall. And I'm not opposed to buying companies if I like them after their dividend is cut. They're usually a better time because the stock has fallen. So this to me would be a bit of a yellow flag that the board could decide to cut the dividend. Okay, so dividend came in again, six point what? Yeah, it was just over, uh, we had a dividend yield of six, a uh, little over 6% here, 6.4. 6.4. All right. Levered free cash flow. What did it show? 
Yes, yeah, so it's three point four million dollars. Um, they uh, had uh, which they are paying the two point six million of dividends out. So it looks like it's a sustainable dividend, but there was a red flag uh, here with remember that we just saw with the working capital. Okay. So we'll uh, yeah. All right. So you're looking at this from both sides. I'm curious to know. Last question is: uh, Would you own this stock? Here's an interesting thing: the dividend is gone. Yahoo and Google and the financial systems haven't updated. Oh. So this is a point I wanted to make on the show. If I go to Yahoo yeah. Finance, if I yeah. go to Google Finance, yeah. it shows a 6.4% dividend. Okay. And it, it has even, it says, what's the forward dividend? Yahoo Finance says 64 But I always go through the press releases. I go through the internal um, quarterly reports. The board decided to cut the dividend this fall because of trying to improve working capital. Hmm. You can't trust the systems 100% across the board. Even Capital IQ had this wrong. Interesting. You have to go in depth to do further research. The, the market knows the stock sold off. Now, the question is, would I buy this stock? Yes, I would buy it now because the dividend's been cut. The stock's yeah. down. Yeah. Nothing's changed with the business. I like this business, but you have to do more research than just simply taking snapshots off Google and Yahoo. Well done. Well done. I think a lot of people get some takeaways with that, but you found Capital IQ, Yahoo Finance. These were not updated. How often do these platforms update something like this? Should this not be on a daily with basis? With dividends, I think what happens is that they notice it's supposed to be paid every three months. And if it has yeah. been paid maybe on month five or six, I went, I cross-referenced Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha did know that okay. it wasn't going to be paid. Okay. So different systems had it up, different systems didn't. Well, I do know in speaking to a lot of small cap investors, there's not a lot of credibility when it comes to Yahoo Finance at times for reasons like that. But Seeking Alpha is definitely one that is valuable for them. But uh, good on them to obviously keep this updated. But to your point, like you said, don't take the word for it. Do your own research and dig deep like we always say, right? Right. All right, so we got one green check mark, which is ARK Restaurants, trades of the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol ARKR. -R. Let's now switch to company number two. It's the first of two commodity stocks here tonight. First up, an oil company out of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It's a company called Gear Energy, trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol G is in George XE, located, as I said, in Calgary. Current share price is 60 cents. Market cap, 158 million. Shares outstanding, 263 million. And daily trading volume is 35,000. What are we seeing as far as a 52 week range for this stock? So it's at the lower end. Uh, it's at trading right now at uh, 60 cents. The 52 week range was 57 cents to 89. Uh, but with it being closer to low, the dividend, stated dividend yield is 10.1%. That's impressive. Uh, so it's uh, very attractive with that type of yield. Okay. So this is an exploration company and production company. So what exactly do they engage in? Yeah, so they're out, they have fields, they're improving fields, they're in production and hence the uh, the dividend. Um, so this is a pure play in Alberta and Saskatchewan in Canada. Um, their, their goal is just to go out, get, acquire, improve, um, monetize, and then move on continually. But they have the objective of paying a very uh, large portion of their cash flow out to uh, shareholders. Okay, so properties you said located in Alberta and Saskatchewan? Correct. It's a Canadian peer play. This one is. And so with this, with energy companies, we also, besides what they do, we have, even though many of them have hedging programs, hedging programs expire. So because of that we have to look at the raw commodity price, part of the thesis behind this play is that uh, oil is down on uh, over the year, but recently has really taken off because of turmoil in the Middle East. Um, there's been additional turmoil in the last week or so with, especially with Iran. Um, so yes. with this, um, there's the expectation Goldman Sachs said that if this continues, that oil could go up by an additional $20 a barrel from here. Um, so this po company potentially is poised to, uh, do well with an increased oil price. Well, the influence as well pertaining to the U.S. election as well. It's like the Biden administration now led by Kamala with her own administration has talked about actually in favor of fracking. So um, you, we all know where Donald Trump sits on this narrative, but uh, 
it'll be curious to see once the new administration is in how things change pertaining to uh, the whole mining sector and commodities. But to your point, a uh, little nervous to say the least as to what's going on in the Middle East with some of the stuff that's developed uh, earlier this week. But watch this closely. Um, all right, let's take a look at the charts now and go to revenue past 12 months along with growth percentage. What did we find? Yeah, so, so revenue is $134 million. Revenue growth was only 1% last year and oils, uh, oil prices uh, have actually come down. Uh, as we know, uh, before yeah. this uh, conflict we've been talking about over the last year. But the revenue growth over the last three years was 30.6. Margins are so healthy in these uh, types of companies, 66.7% margins, which is just huge. And of course, SGNA is low uh, with these commodity companies. We see we, we're not trying to market sexy oil. It's 12.6% only that they have to spend. So their EBITDA last year was $72 million, which it's trading for two times last year's EBITDA, which uh -huh. is uh, just uh, unbelievable with a 10% dividend. So, so far that looked uh, very, very intriguing. Based on what you've said so far, Bill, like what do you forecast for 2025 pertaining to this overall industry, more specifically a company like this? Like, do you see big upside potential for it as to what's going on right now? I think there, I think this, this conflict in the, in the Middle East is not going to disappear next week. No. Um, I, I think also we uh, went through a, a period. I think also in the in the U.S. we all there was a lot of an assumption in the last month of an economic challenges coming, but we see the job reports that came out on Friday. They were absolutely remarkable, uh, positively. So because of this, I think the economy is humming along. There's some conflict here, but this company was already doing well at the stated oil price. So if oil prices continue to be uh, higher than here now, I think they're uh, going to do very well. I proceed with caution with that job report. I'd like to see what kind of jobs they basically reported. It seems like everything's fluffy and great when you lead up to an election. But uh, the reality is, is that uh, we are in uncertain times right now. And a lot of it pertains to as to what's going on overseas. But regardless, we won't get into that. We looked at revenue. We looked at gross margins. What's the balance sheet showing as far as current cash position, cash position along with working capital? Yeah, they, they manage it quite tightly. Uh, <clears throat> they have a million dollars of cash. Their working capital's negative a million dollars. Um, so they have credit lines to use to keep cash light. But their total debt or liabilities compared to assets is only 29%. And their breakup value is two hundred forty-one million compared to a market cap of one fifty-eight. Wow! So there's a lot of assets uh, backing this uh, as well. Levered free cash flow is showing what? It was only twenty million dollars last year, um, but they had capital expenditures of forty-two. So they're just reinvesting heavily into new properties and into the business as well. And so with the leverage free cash flow of twenty million, they paid fifteen million of it out to uh, investors. Wow. Um, so they had the money to pay. Um, they paid it out. And so um, these types of businesses, uh, oil price is a determining factor yes, of their of future course. success. But it, it looks like with conflict and things that are going on, um, that it looks like there's a positive outlook for the price of oil. So it looks like those uh, dividends are stable. And I, I did confirm the dividends uh, are still being paid. Nice. There's no uh, reason for them not to be paid. And okay. so uh, this is intriguing. Dividend over 10%. Very strong to say the least. All right, last uh, question. I assume this is our th uh, second green check mark. Would you own this stock? I would. I like the dividends and I like the pure play uh, oil uh, exposure here. And uh, I think the uh, likely the price of the commodity is uh, strong over the next uh, coming period of time going forward. All right, good to know. Two down, two to go. Third company, which is another commodity stock here tonight. It's a gold company based out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. It's called Fortitude Gold Corp. Trades on the OTC pink sheets under the ticker symbol FTCO. Current share price $5.11. Market cap is $123 million. Shares outstanding is $24 million. And daily trading volume is just over a quarter of a million at $200 and 52,000. Okay, as usual, let's begin. 52 week range for this stock showed what? Yeah, for, so the range is about three and a half dollars to six and a half dollars. It's at 511, so it uh, is trading near the higher part of its 52 week high. Um, and it's uh, up about 50% since it's a COVID IPO in uh, 2021. So it's, it's, it's been, uh, and along with a 9.4% dividend. So uh, the stock has done well. 
Why do you think the stock has surged? Any idea? Um, you know, I think people are attracted to that dividend. They also had uh, some concerns. Well, all companies have these concerns in, in mining with permitting uh, from the federal government uh, in the U.S., and that's been resolved over the last uh, couple months. So they received yep. the permits that they required to continue on. So I think uh, there's been uh, some cheerleading, uh, some cheer cheerleaders joined the story uh, because they were waiting to see what would happen with permitting. And of course, gold has been absolutely flying. Yes, I was going to say, you mentioned here that dividend gold paying stocks are very interesting. And well, let's face it, any stock that pays a dividend is rather interesting. But you want to explain a little bit more on what you mean by here? Does it have to pertain to the, the idea that gold is flying? Yeah, you know, the, the show, uh, we looked at the show, we looked at an interesting name uh, earlier in the year in Colombia, which was just uh, fantastic with their dividend. And so this is what, that always caught my attention, keeping the look for more gold paying dividend companies. Uh, but I think this is, when you buy gold or you buy a gold ETF, you're not getting a dividend. Um, but this is a nice way to get exposure to gold yep. and you're getting paid a dividend uh, off the production of it. And so if gold goes up, a company like this long term will go up as well, but you're actually getting paid something with just the pure ownership of gold. You're not. And so that's why I have this attraction to these gold paying uh, dividend stocks. Well, the stock has surged, as you said, 50 percent since its IPO during COVID. So let's break it down and find out whether or not it's still a good time to get into this stock. Uh, first up, revenue tw last 12 months and growth percentage showed what? Yeah, so they had 50 million of revenue. Uh, over the last year, the revenue was down because they were waiting for some permits. It was down 34%. But over the last three years, it's been growing at 10.6. Uh, but the margins uh, are substantial at 69.5. Um, their SGA the margins looks, so what? That's huge. Well, it's, yeah, they, they, it's open pit mining. And so because of that, uh, your your actual costs are less. Uh, so it was it was intriguing to see that they could to do that. The, uh, the SG&A is uh, showing high at 41.2, but that's just because the revenue was down um, yep. over the year waiting for the permits. But still last year with a slower year, they had EBITDA of 14 uh, point, uh, four, a little over $14 million. So this is uh, intriguing, uh, the first look at their uh, income statement. Yes. Uh, they have some really strong margins here um, doing open pit mining where they are. No kidding. You want to explain a little bit more about open pit mining is? It's so to, uh, to to be able to dig a hole with a machine and to have it open is way less complicated than trying to bore holes down where you can't reach and all the complication and safety issues that come um, going into dark places. When you're on the open, this becomes the similar just mining and oil sands or whatever. It's way less complicated and more straightforward. And costs are less, I assume, as well? Absolutely, yeah. Costs and danger and complication. And yeah. then also your uh, risk uh, of uh, not having success is much higher with these uh, non-open pit mines. So the open pit mining is uh, is very intriguing when you see a company is doing it. All right. Good find, to say the least. What the uh, dividend show again? Yeah, the dividend uh, was very, very healthy at the current stock price. It's 9.4%. Yeah. Um, and this is, you know, if, if someone had bought it at the 52 week low, they'd be clipping around 13, 14 percent. That's um, nice. So it's a really intriguing uh, play uh, at that yield, even though the stock has been up. Don't always believe in Bitcoin. Focus on commodities sometimes, too. Right. And gold is just seems to be not going away anytime soon, nor do I ever think it will. But uh, OK, levered free cash flow showed what? Yeah, so they had a $10 million on average over the last two years. Um, and this is after they paid all their uh, capital costs. And and they're, and they're strong, too, on the you know, balance sheet. They got $48 million of working capital, $32 million of cash. They don't really have debt. 8.4% uh, uh, total liabilities to assets. It all looks clean going through the, the three financial statements. Great. So it looks like you would own this stock for my last question. I like it. I like the upside, uh, having some exposure to gold. I like instead. I like to find a dividend paying gold companies instead of owning uh, the gold ETF or gold itself. Uh, I like to get paid some uh, income off the production instead of no just uh, owning the commodity. So I, I would buy it for sure. All right. So three green check marks. And now time for our final company here tonight. Fourth company. It's called Big Five 
Sporting Goods. Trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol BGFV. Located in Los Angeles, current share price is $2.02, market cap $44 million. Shares outstanding is $22 million, and daily trading volume is a million dollars. Curious to see what this company is, but first up, uh, when I look at this, and I'm reading over some of the uh, information here, this stock's been kind of all over the place. Company uh, is down over 85% from its initial IP back in mid-2022. What's happened here? Yeah, so it followed the path of many retailers. And so kind of like GameStop, uh, people were uh, shorting it uh, significantly, thinking that it was going to be all doomed. They do have an online presence, a significant one, uh, in addition to their brick and mortar stores. Yeah, But it's been a, a challenging situation. So there was a lot of shorts. And then all of a sudden, it became a meme stock, uh, like uh, a meme stock, just like GameStop. Uh, people were uh, flying with it. So the stock went way up during COVID, um, then came back crashing down again. So that's why it's been all over the map. But now it, it's hard to outrun the uh, the fundamentals. It's tough to be uh, in a brick and mortar store. And then it's also tough to have successful online uh, enterprises um, based on brick and mortar stores, which we've, we've seen in the past. So yeah. retail is uh, always tough. But there was the expression, I see it all over the place that this is a company that's been paying its dividend for over two decades uh, consistently. And that's something that when you hear this name or if you Google the name, you'll see top, front and center about how consistent the stock has been paying its dividend. Hmm. All right. So let's within the 52 week range for the stock, because you said it's down 85 percent from its initial IP. But what's uh, and it's all over the place. But how's it performed over the past 52 weeks? This year is tough. It uh, was in a range between a dollar and a half and uh, eight dollars, and it's trading at uh, around yeah. two dollars right now. Okay. The stated dividend yield on Yahoo Finance and Google and others is nine point nine. It's uh, and it's been you know something that has been paying for uh, twenty two uh, odd years. So is this a, a trap or is this something that uh, is I was going to ask that? At? For a company that's been as volatile and share price has been all over the place and a company that really was a meme stock at one time, providing an over 9% dividend, is that something, obviously, as you said, you need to be watchful and mindful of, but uh, why do you think this is a company that's still producing that kind of dividend? You know, it's, it's hard to understand. And so I was a little curious at first. And so I said, well, let's see if we can make our own determination looking at the financials. If we were board members, would we decide to keep paying that amount of uh, cash out? based on how they look. And so we can see if, what our opinion would be after we uh, take a peek. Okay, let's look at the charts. Revenue, past 12 months along with growth percentage showed what? So the revenue, $829 million. So it's significant uh, for sure, uh, but it's down 12% in the last year and it's been losing 5% a year uh, for the last three. So okay. it's our first red flag here. The revenue is in a long-term decline. Okay, balance sheet, current cash position huh, and working capital is showing what? Strong. So they still have $100 million of working capital. Um, they got cash of $5 million. Uh, they have debt there, though, of uh, 66% of the assets. Um, so that's, uh, th you know, that looks pretty good. But the, the other concern that we had the red flag too, though, that was the SGNA with the online business has creeped up to 35%, and okay. the gross margin is only 31 So we know that's going in the wrong direction as well. Yeah, like we've always say every single week, look at two important stats, SG&A and gross margins, and that's in the negative. So we all want cash flow, and we all want, obviously, positive cash flow. So with that, um, do we have any kind of credit score for this company? Did you find anything? It's, 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 it's actually it's, it's in range in the, in the middle because of the fact that they have so much cash that they're sitting on. So they okay. have an extremely deteriorating business, Yep, but they do have cash. So if you're looking at this as a, as a burn rate, we would think, well, maybe based on this, they may have another, you know, five or six years left, but this company is going in the wrong direction. Gotcha. Okay. Cash flow statements, levered free cash flow and uh, showed what? Over the last two years, it was uh, about a half a million dollars. So they had something that was positive coming in there, but they were paying out a dividend of $4.3 million. So the cash flow is not there to support the dividend. So that's that one of the number go. one huge red flag on a dividend. If you don't have real cash flow, that means that you're paying it out of your balance sheet. Yikes. And that's paying it. So you don't, that's not going to continue. Um, so as a board, if I was a board member, I would say, hey, this is going on too long. 
the online business is not working. Our SG&A is too high. Yes, we do have capital. Why are we sending this out to investors unnecessarily? I would, yeah. I would strongly put up my hand and say, let's cut this dividend. So in the event they do cut that, what next then? Like if you're an investor, walk us through, I guess, when you cut a dividend, like what, what's, what's something that, you know, you would consider looking at and actually in a positive want to consider a company in this particular case? So what happens is dividends are being paid. That's fantastic uh, for a, a stockholder. Rumors of dividends stopping, stocks start falling. You want to be out before that. A dividend gets cut. The next day it opens up. The stock drops mm -hmm. and it keeps on keeps on going down. Eventually, there's a place that you're like, well, let's just analyze this company, whether like regardless of the dividend. And, and if you can go through this exercise and it looks good, like the restaurant company, that's a great opportunity because then you're buying a stock often that's 50 percent discounted. Gotcha. Some of the greatest plays I've ever seen in my in my career was you would have a company that would be paying a dividend, say, of 10 percent. Okay. And, and people were, especially ones that were historic, and they, they had been buying as paying these dividends for 50 years. And then the company would say, okay, we are dropping the dividend in half. But then sometimes the stocks would drop by 50%. And so when you would buy it later, you would end up getting the same 10% dividend, but it was way safer. Way safer. And so I love, I love looking at companies after they cut their dividend. All right, so there's a small cap but, trend to look for. Yes, but this one, so everywhere you see on Google, they paid their dividend for 22 years. Yahoo, Google is telling you that everything is going strong, but the board decided to no longer pay dividends. Hmm. They've announced it, but the, the consolidators of information do not have that available. Interesting. Um, so that's two of the so four. Again, right. So do your due diligence. Two of the four. Take away. Do yeah. your research. Yeah. But even looking at this, we wouldn't have considered buying it because we can see all the red flags yeah, thinking that the dividend is going to be cut. Well, let's face it. There's been a number of COVID meme stocks that you just need to walk before you run. There was another company. Remember that it was pertaining to actually COVID, a company called Sona Nanotech. Do you remember that stock? I don't remember that one, no. It was a penny stock and raced to 16 bucks. They had some sort of patent was later declined by the FDA. And I just looked right now. It's a penny stock again at just under 20 cents. So, oh man, that stock roared back in 2020, but quickly fell back to reality shortly after. All right, let's get back to this last company. Big five sporting goods, NASDAQ trades in the ticker symbol, uh, trades in the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol BGFE. Would you own this stock? Uh, no, because mm -hmm. I don't see them working their online business. Um, their SGNA is just too high. Their revenue is dying. I've been to their stores once in a while. They have something that's unique um, that that I've picked up. I think I bought made one purchase in the last uh, ten years, but yeah, I have no need to go back. So I'm just not I'm not intrigued by it. All right, big takeaways here from the dividend show: do your due diligence and. A group of waiters and waitresses could pretty much calculate all their tips based on a 15% ratio and perhaps buy out a company. That's probably the most interesting stat we've done since we launched this show. Great stuff, my friend. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think this was good as far as some of the education, uh, as far as some of the questions that was asked pertaining to this, some of the commodity stocks as well. But, uh, you know, when a company slashes their dividend, pay close attention as to some of the things that you just outlined and proceed, uh, obviously, by doing a lot of your due diligence. Uh, but this has been good and I appreciate obviously the feedback. Great, yeah, look forward to next week. All right, thanks Bill, appreciate it. Check in with you next week. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching. Hey, we're humming along and it's all because of you and the audience and community that we're building. So again, make sure to smash on that like button and leave lots of comments. Who do we have up next? You let us know. Who should we interview? What companies? Is there anything you like? Is there anything we're missing? We're all here for you. Let's get on with each other and build this community for all of us to benefit. As usual, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because in the end, we wouldn't be here without you. Thanks again, everyone.